All right, so you've just bought your shiny new action camera, but which SD card should you buy for the camera? Now, not all SD cards are created equal. So in this video, I wanted to talk through about the different SD cards that you can buy and which types I would recommend to make sure your videos look the absolute best with your new camera. So why does SD card choice actually matter? Well, let's just say you've bought a brand new camera. You've spent a decent amount of money on this thing. The last thing you want to do is compromise its performance and potentially ruin the footage by skimping out on the SD cards. Now I've tried dozens of different SD cards and feel like I've got a good idea of the best SD cards that one, give the best performance and two, are the most reliable. I couldn't tell you how many times I've been out recording before with cheap SD cards back when I first started using action cameras. You record a, a really cool bit of mountain biking or whatever sport or thing you're filming only to get back and find either one, the quality is absolute crap, two, this is the worst case thing ever, heartbreaking, the actual file corrupts. And not only does the file, that single file corrupt, it can actually corrupt everything that's already on the card. So you have the potential to lose all this footage. So it's almost like an insurance mechanism for spending, spend more money on SD card is what I'm trying to say. It, it will pay off dividends, and I'm gonna show you now on Amazon which cards I would recommend buying. Okay, so I'm over on Amazon now, and I've just searched micro SD cards. This is what generally action cameras use nowadays. And before I jump into telling you which card you want, I probably would also recommend you get the biggest size card possible, especially if you have a 360 camera, because last thing you wanna do is run out of storage space. So my recommendation is to get the biggest amount of space possible for your budget. Um, I use cards that are 128 gigabytes, 512, 256, and sometimes even a terabyte. There are cards that are like that now, and I would highly recommend it if you can afford them. Um, but if we look down here, look, we've got cards ranging for different prices, different spaces. Um, some without any branding, some that are very well known. But let's just go into this one first, SanDisk Ultra. So SanDisk are one of the big players in, in the uh, micro SD card space. And uh, these are good cards. They're not great cards though. So, you know, you've got 256 gigabytes, massive space. Transfer speed, 150 megabytes a second, fantastic. Um, if we come down here though, the one thing you wanna look for is write speed. Where's write speed? Where's the write speed on this one? I think this looks like up to 140 megabytes, that's read speed, that's not write speed. I can't find the write speed in here. Let me just try and find another card to show you this. So what you wanna be looking for, so we're going to this, this is one of my recommended cards, SanDisk Extreme. And you want to look for, high write speeds. So let me just try and find this, what I'm actually looking for to show you. So up to 90 megabytes a second write speed for fast shooting. So write speed is essentially how fast the camera puts your raw footage onto the SD card and saves it. And if you're trying to shoot at 4K, eight, even 8K now on these action cameras, you want a camera and an SD card that can handle this data and store it as quickly as possible. Because if you have a super low write speed, this is where the problems happen and potential corruption happens. So it makes sense to spend more money on these cards. And even, look, 128 gigabyte card, 15 pounds, 14 pounds, a terabyte, that is a hell of a lot of space. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to carry SD cards around in a, in a carry case like I do, then go for something a little bit more expensive and you can just store it all on one or two cards. I would recommend having two cards just for safety because these things, you know, they can break if you don't look after them or you have an accident with them or something. Uh, let's just go into Amazon Basic. So this is a card that I would believe would be not very good. But let's just go and look at the specs anyway because Amazon can sometimes pull out some um, pretty, pretty interesting products. So we look here. It has a write speed up to 60 megabytes a second. So again, this is on the lower side of things. So it's a bit of a cheaper SD card, but if we click high speed, let's see what this has in store for us. So write speed of 150 megabytes. So this is definitely up my street. I would definitely be more inclined to this Amazon Basics SD card versus the normal speed. Like it's really not worth it, guys. Especially if you're shooting a lot of motion, a lot of data, and you want the best quality videos. <clears throat> so 
So this is another big player in the market, a brand called Lexa. Let's look at the write speed on this one. So transfer speed of 100 megabytes a second. Again, that's perfect. Anything above like 90 megabytes a second write speed is probably pretty decent. That's the, that's what you want to be looking for though. So don't just skimp out and buy the cheapest SD cards. Spend five, 10 minutes looking through these things and decide which card you want. And I would definitely recommend not getting a 32 gigabyte card. It's too small nowadays. I'd probably just recommend maybe a 128 uh, or a 512 gigabyte. Just then you're just not going to run out of space when you're shooting. It's an, honestly, it's an absolute nightmare when you go out shooting and you, your camera just makes this strange noise to let you know there's no space left and you're in the middle of action. It sucks. So make sure you avoid that by getting a card with more space. So those would be my top three picks. Sandisk Extreme Pro, the Lexar card, and Amazon's basic high speed card. Those are really good. I will leave links in the description below to those if you want to just go and grab them off Amazon. And if you are looking for the best settings for your camera, so now you've got the, the camera, the card, now you need the settings to go with it. Grab my video settings cheat sheet, which will also be linked down below to. It's a one page cheat sheet of all my favorite settings. You just plug them in and away you go. But I hope that was useful. Go get a good SD card.